Hi you guys, I'm back with another video. Let's go. So today we're gonna be talking about myths and misconceptions regarding weight loss, personal training, muscle building, a few different categories. And you know, there's a lot of information out there. Some of it is amazing, some of it not so much at all. And especially if this isn't the industry that you're completely dedicated to for work, career, whatever, like it's hard to know what's the right information and what is good for you. Because at the end of the day, everybody's different. So let's go ahead and get started. I get, oh, my cat just jumped at my foot. Come say hi. This is Toulouse. She's so over me right now. Anyway, so my name again, Alexa, and we're gonna chat it up. Here we go. Okay, so the first myth and or misconception in the weight loss community, um, industry, all of that is needing to cut out snacking. And this is one of those where it's definitely, everybody's a little different. If you're a big snacker, I know I am, that can be really difficult. I love little snacks. I try to keep them as healthy and unprocessed as I can. And that's gonna be your best bet, especially if you're someone who loves to snack outside of your meals or just needs to switch up your approach. Um, but again, it's not for everybody. So however, if you find yourself snacking a lot more often or just being hungrier throughout the day and you know you're getting a good amount of nutrients, a good amount of calories in throughout your day, but you're still kind of snacking more and you're in the middle of like a weight loss journey, this can just indicate that your body is trying to resort back to its um, original set point, which can be a set weight too. That can be a genetic thing, it can be an environment thing, but your body does have a point where it's used to this as default and that can include your weight too. So when you're at a spot where you're trying to reset your metabolism or lose a significant amount of weight or not even necessarily that significant, um, it can be an indication that your body is in like fight or flight mode. So it's like, is this normal? Do we need to be worried? Do we need to be eating more? Like to offset this wanting to lose more weight. So you could be at a spot where you're just snacking more and hungrier more because your body is cautiously trying to keep an eye out for you. So it's doing its best, you know, at the end of the day. Um, but that may just be an indication that your metabolism needs to be reset before you can fully commit to the weight loss journey, which is a real thing. A lot of people don't necessarily fall under the category of, oh, I just need to be in a calorie deficit. And that's the case when losing body fat, don't get me wrong, you need to be in a calorie deficit and exercising and eating well, and that's definitely the best bet. But everyone is in a different place with their metabolism and their, their hormones. So if those are out of whack and your body is sending you different triggers and um, different signs for needing to hold on to your body fat, or needing to eat more and all these things, that might just be a sign that your metabolism is out of whack and you might need to approach that a little more, which sometimes can come from eating more and sometimes it can come from eating less and prioritizing certain foods to just get your body on track with what you're trying to do with your weight loss journey. So that's an interesting one because I don't necessarily think you need to cut out snacks. I think there are benefits from spending a certain amount of time or hours in like a fast mode, which when you're sleeping, you're fasting, you know? So you're taking however many hours out of your full 24 hour day to spend not eating and to spend resting. So outside of that, I think there are definitely benefits to having kind of a fasting approach or waiting until a certain time to stop eating or start eating. However, if you're a snacker and you're eating light, and you're getting enough protein and this is something that your body is used to, you can continue to do that while on a weight loss journey. You don't have to cut out all of your favorite things necessarily and ways of eating and times of eating, but if you're in a place where it's too much, your metabolism might be freaking out. So that might be restricting you from the progress that you're trying to make. Okay, the next myth in the weight loss universe um, if you're taking any weight loss medication specifically to lose weight, they're bullshit, most likely. But yeah, they're bullshit. Um, there are no real operating, working weight loss supplements and or pills that are gonna be the magic trick. It's not. The magic trick is prioritizing a good amount of exercise, sleep. If you're getting bad sleep, you're gonna have a hard time losing weight hands down. And nutrition, you know, if your nutrition is out of whack and most of what you're consuming is, let's say, 
a ton of like artificial protein drinks, protein bars, processed things that are seemingly very healthy, this is gonna stop you too, because you are human at the end of the day. Your body is built to consume particular things, and we have a lot of stuff on the market right now that is totally against that and doesn't really go by the whole foods approach. So your best bet is gonna be to eliminate any additional chemically things, especially weight loss supplements. There's a lot of nonsense comp like chemicals in them that aren't gonna aid in anything, honestly. So it does offer a sense of peace of mind that you're doing something when taking a weight loss supplement. You're like, okay, I'm taking this additional pill a day. It's gonna help me. I don't necessarily need to change what I'm doing, but this just gives me the idea that I'm doing something. If you're one of those people, I used to be one of those people. Oh, traffic. <laughs> Um, I was definitely like 40 pounds heavier at one point in my life and even before that when I was even just 10 pounds heavier than I wanted to be I would resort to whatever information I could find and this was like in early college like I wasn't a trainer I was a dancer but still I wasn't prioritizing learning about nutrition and proper eating and exercise I was just like throwing my body into dancing and then eating whatever I could and or wanted so yeah Definitely prioritize whole foods and exercise and seeing and, and learn about what metabolisms are and just seeing kind of what category you fall under. If you're someone who needs to reset your metabolism before fully plunging into a weight loss journey, that might be something you have to do. It's not the most fun news, but if your metabolism, again, and your hormones are out of whack, you're going to have a hard time losing weight. And adding weight loss drugs on top of it aren't going to help. Love you. Another myth would be our biology gets in the way of our weight loss. And we're in a place generationally where we've had a full generation of humans in this country specifically eating processed nonsense. So we have so many people who are overweight and this is like the first time in, I mean this century is the first time this you know, species has probably had to deal with that in like a real, real way because we're just pumping our bodies full of artificial bullshit. And it's not that you're doing it on purpose or I'm doing it on purpose, it's how we live. If you live, I, I'm from a small town. If I go home, the best options for food around, aside from making it on your own, is gonna be like franchise processed fast food. You know, so if you're in a part of the country or a place in the world where your only options other than making food for yourself or a cheaper option is going to be to go to McDonald's, you're going to go to McDonald's. So this is like a big issue across the board and we're just victims in the situation. So the more on top of it you can be for yourself moving forward from here, the better. Because realistically, yeah, it's not biology that's getting in your way to a certain extent. We can all strive for our best body. Sometimes we're, right now we're generationally in a tough spot where a lot of people are very overweight and unhappy and don't know what they did wrong. They just were following what information they could and you know, not everyone is out here ball and making a ton of money. Some people are on very strict budgets and a $2 chicken sandwich from McDonald's is gonna be the best bet for them. And it's tough, you know? So there's a lot of stuff marketed at us and when it comes to losing weight and associating it with your biological genetic structures, um, we are in a place where you gotta look big picture. Centuries ago, the common human was to a certain extent physically fit. We were laborers, you know? We were working on our feet all day. We were moving around and, you know, eating protein, carbs, and vegetables throughout the day and fats, you know? So we were doing these seemingly simple things but now it's honestly not that easy because you know we're sitting at our desks all day we're doing our thing we're ordering postmates we're, we're grabbing quick snacks out of the vending machine things are just too easily accessible but only, only the bad things <laughs> and it is more expensive to a certain extent to cook organic all the time these things are expensive so doing what you can to recognize like okay i'm not in a stuck position no matter how overweight i am where i am today i can prioritize getting better for tomorrow because the body that you might be idealizing might not be the body that you can realistically build because everyone's structure is different and genetics are different the way we hold fat and the way we hold muscle is all a little bit different so 
taking that aside, moving towards your best body, yes, aesthetically, but feeling your best, that's gonna come from proper nutrition and exercising and sleeping really, really well, amongst other things, but those are the main three. So, you know, take outside of that and think, okay, how can I do better? Yes, tomorrow. But what's gonna be the habit that I need to create for myself? Because we're habitual creatures, you know? If I can switch up a habit, that's gonna take about three to four weeks to really kick it in gear. So it's not gonna take a day or two. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of time and commitment. So if you want to be the kind of person you see in your future, picture that person. Be like, okay, what is their day to day? What is their habit? This best version of myself. Think about that, you know, because everyone can have a weight loss journey. Everyone can have their best bodies. It's just a matter of starting and doing it and committing to it. Got it. All right, our next myth is a classic. Building muscle makes you, as a woman, especially, bulky. Honey, do you know how much you're gonna have to lift to get bulky? Especially if you're built like me, I'm long and lanky. I'm tall, I'm 5'10". I lift heavy. And this is like as much muscle on my arms, especially that I've had probably ever. And I wouldn't consider me bulky, you know? So the bulky look, that, that really is determined by your body shape, how often you're lifting, and what kind of workouts you're doing and how you're eating on top of it. So, you know, the average woman historically, we, we love to go to cardio, you know, it's our favorite thing. And building muscle isn't necessarily like the typical goal, you know, that we've heard over and over and over again. Until recently, you know, women are learning this more and more. So I'm just kind of adding to that and letting you know, Cardio is not gonna be your only option. It can't be your only option. If you want this long, lean look where you're nice and toned and snatched on top of, yes, being skinny or whatever, um, you should lift some weights. They don't have to be crazy heavy, but if you're at the place with your body where you've done all the bar, you've done all the yoga, you've done all the running and cardio, yet you're still having some areas where you're like, this isn't the shape that I want, or this isn't defined in the ways that I'm hoping it, it, it should be, that might come from lifting weights. That might come from building a little shoulder. That might come from building a little bicep to really cinch and tighten what you've already, you know, lost a certain amount of body fat, but having muscle on your body is burning fat. Cardio is, yes, burning fat, but you're not building muscle to do that while you're out and about and living your life on a normal day. While you're sleeping, you're building muscle. But realistically, building muscle is something that if you prioritize it and you make it, you know, even just a couple times a week, building and then spending cardio and doing things that you enjoy outside of that too, but watch your body's gonna snatch up. Because once you build a certain amount of muscle, you're burning extra calories throughout your day. That's why you need to be eating a little bit more too, because maintaining whatever muscle you're looking to build is going to require more protein, more food, more carbs, but you're going to maintain that snatch. You know, so if you have excess body fat, but you're considered skinny, the best way to remove that is to add a little more muscle. And you're going to be burning more calories and fat throughout the day because you have more muscles in general. So, ladies do the lifting, promise you, it's gonna work out. And you're gonna be like, oh shit. Okay, I think this is our last myth, our last myth. Um, you can never be too flexible. This is for my dancers, my yogis, anyone who is looking to get more flexible or prioritizes their flexibility. Um, you, the, yes, I agree to a certain extent. You can never get too flexible because your body, it's your space to explore. Like if you want to prioritize getting as flexible as you can and that's your like life's goal or whatever, like do it. This is your body and it's able to do so many incredible things. So yes, test that limit where I think people are missing the additional priority in this topic is the mobility factor. So there's strength, yes, the muscle is strong. And then there's mobility, which is how you move through your flexibility. And then there's just flexibility. An example would be if I just kick my leg up really hard and it's really high and cute, that showcases my flexibility. If I hold it up there and slowly bringing it down, that control within being flexible in that moment is mobility. 
so what I think a lot of dancers, especially especially when I was younger, I had this issue too. I got flexible to a certain extent, but I couldn't move throughout the flexibility. And that can easily cause injury over time because you're just throwing your body into things and pushing the muscles and tendons to a limit that is, yes, created, and you put yourself in that situation to safely get there, and you've done it over and over again, but that, and that's fine, but your body does change over time. So prioritizing building the connection between strength and flexibility and learning to mobilize throughout your flexibility is going to be a really good long-term approach to make sure yes you maintain that flexibility but also you're strong throughout it and you can trust your body a bit more because let's say you go into a kick or you go into a split and for some reason something goes a little wrong um, if you have the mobility to get in and out of it a little bit easier using your muscles because they're on and active is going to be a lot better getting out of um, a stick, a pickle, I guess, then if you don't have that strength established and you've practiced it enough to know, okay, I'm in a sticky spot, but I can get out of it because I train my body to do that. So when your muscles are on and active and helping you, you're going to be in a better spot than if they're turned off and you're just indulging in your flexibility. So yes, train and stretch and live your best life but i think training mobility on top of it is going to be a really big piece of the puzzle for longevity yep all right you guys thanks for watching that's today's video just a few myths that need to be debunked in the weight loss stretching training world that i see pretty often or come up pretty often so let me know if you have any more that you want answered or have any questions because I love to talk. I really do. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.